I'm Greg Colvin. I'm uh, working for the foundation right now. Um, technically as a part-time contractor. I'm trying hard not to let it completely take over my life, um, which seems to be a strong danger with Ethereum. Anyone who gets into it, it just seems to take over. <laughs> and uh, My main job, I've narrowed in in just the EVM, the interpreter for the EVM, and uh, trying to get as much efficiency out of that as I can. What's cool about as far as Ethereum goes is that it's what distinguishes Ethereum from Bitcoin and a number of other altcoins and makes Ethereum more than just some sort of money. Um, for me and for a lot of people, Ether is just what makes it run. We don't really care that it's money. I don't care day to day what the value of Ether is, whether it goes up or down. It's just the fuel that runs the machine. And so what's interesting is the things you can do with it. And that's where the EVM is actually running the little pieces of code that let people do all the various amazing things they've been talking about for the last three days. A lot of which just goes past me because they're in you know, all kinds of different businesses. So here's somebody doing some sort of you know, validated notary stuff. The business is really neat. I don't know why they need it, but they do. And apparently they can do it on a blockchain uh, much better than they can do it other ways. Um, and you've been here too, so you know just how many presentations there have been. And just idea after idea after idea that would not be possible except that we have a programmable blockchain. And so apparently I'm just at the sort of the heart of that, the kernel. And as I was saying, it's a strange place to be because um, people will ask me other things about Ethereum and it's like, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I, I tried to read the yellow paper. Um, <laughs> I went to the appendix with the opcodes and the gas cost function and I sort of understand those. And that's all I really need to understand. Um, there's something called delicate call. It goes away and does something. You know, there's something called gas. It returns a number. <laughs> um, so for me, the rest of Ethereum is just sort of a black box, which is probably a multidimensionally inverted view because for other people, the VM is just a black box. And the rest of the system they understand, but somehow the other program goes into this black box and it does computation and comes out and they no more understand it than they understand the CPU in their smartphone. So there's a very large number of questions you could ask me that I would not know the answer to. Like if I'm talking with Vitalik, while I'm talking with him, I understand this. He's that sort, that sort of person that just sort of pulls you up to his level and suddenly you're conversing with him. And then 10 minutes later, it's, <laughs> it's like, what was he talking about? Um, but just the general concept of, ha you know, of hashing things and chaining things together by, it, by their hashes, um, I do get. Um, and it's a very powerful concept. Um, you know, the way IPFS uh, leverages it, um, lots of systems are starting to leverage it. Um, that, oh, you hash something, you know, um, the hash is so unlikely to collide um, that you can just use it as an ID. And uh, even I still have trouble wrapping my head around that. It's like someone will say, well, the sun is more likely to supernova. And I'm still going, no, no, I, I don't want that. I want certainty. I want absolute mathematical certainty. The program runs and it gives a result, period. Um, and you have to drop that in a lot of crypto stuff and say, no, we're dealing with probabilities and the probabilities are so overwhelming, you just don't worry about it. Um, and it works. Well, it's not starting quite so much from scratch. Um, and it's a lot more millennial, as it were. Um, 
was a relatively small number of technical people got going with the internet, um, but they were fairly senior people. Um, and it seems a pretty young crowd just jumped on this. Um, I don't know what the average age is, but it seems like mid-twenties sometimes. Um, and there's advantages to that. You know, just a huge amount of enthusiasm and energy. And that's the good side. And I think that's, we're seeing a lot of that. that things, people are doing things that we just didn't know were possible. Um, and I like that. It's technology. Technology that works, works. And then, you know, people, people being people do what they do with it. I remember working at Oracle, that really hits. You've got this database, you know, what are you going to do with it? Well, any government can use it. One government can use it to be, you know, paying for people's health care. Uh, the very same government could be using it to keep track of all of their nuclear weapons. You know, is it a good technology? Is it an evil technology? No, it's, it's a database that keeps track of stuff. It's a blockchain. You put things on it, what you put on it whatever you want. So, so it's a powerful technology that will, will have an effect and make a difference. But it's uh, unfortunately not up to the technologist to know what that is.